you giving, that's how we live it Don't be mad at the system, it's simply how we've existed I hear a lot of people talking like they politicians And choose to be an accountant because it's safe in the business Not because they wanna do it, just because they heard it pays And who the fuck wants to be poor, no one, that's how we've been raised Society is getting heavy, I can feel the weight The pressure of success is like a hundred million pounds of shit how are you guys doing today? It's Anthony Ganji. Welcome to another episode of Tear Talk. Today we're in for a treat. We have Russ Hamilton and Connie Eileen, and we're going to be discussing something very important. Be in support for each other. Be in the motivating factors that keep us in this profession, even when times are tough, because we are going to have those bad days. I believe this is a topic that hits home for Connie as well as Russ. Uh, Russ definitely right now is the one that came up with this topic because it's personal to him because of an interaction he had on, I would, well, he'll explain, but probably on social media. And uh, it motivated Russ to call me today and say, Gans, we got to do a topic right now on how we need to support each other, how we need to motivate each other through the toughest of times. And I think this is a great idea. We're going to keep the topic really quick. Uh, hey, Russ, you mind introducing yourself again? Hey everyone out there, uh, my name is Russ Hamilton. I have uh, 27 years experience with California Department of Corrections, some other experience with rehabilitation, some other experience with juveniles. Um, and uh, basically I run uh, Keepers of Chaos on Facebook and I'm a contributor to Tear Talk and I love corrections, I'm retired now, but I'm just out there trying to bring you know good content, good knowledge, good training to all of you corrections professionals out there. Yes, and every time you're on the show, Russ, there's always some great information. We actually did a great Facebook Live video the other day. If you guys are on Facebook, you guys should check it out. I think you'll actually see it on Keepers of Chaos. And it's just, uh, it was a Q&A. Uh, we had a lot of people coming in just asking us questions, and me and Russ were trying to get right on to those answers. Now, guys, we also have author Connie Eileen. And guys, check this out. Her, her book's available for pre-purchase. Sales are doing very well. Um, I'm actually very, uh, just, just humbled to know her now, you know, she's an author now. And, uh, I mean, I'll be right behind her. We have the inmate manipulation book coming up and then Russ will have his book on complacency soon, but the pioneer right now in today's dialogue, is going to be Connie Eileen, Connie, the author, the, oh, the legend, it. the legend. No way. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everybody. Connie Eileen here. I am the founder and president of the Civilian Corrections Academy. I come to you guys with almost two decades of experience in the correctional field. Um, I am also a podcast host for The Fly Behind the Wall. And now I am a published author. Um, Pre-order sales began October 15th. They are doing actually quite well. I'm actually very happy. If you're interested in the book, just check out www.thecagewashercocoon.com. So I'm enjoying my time on Tear Talk. Being part of the Tear Talk family has been tons of fun. And I look forward to having this dialogue tonight. And guys, you're in for a treat if you do uh, get a chance to read the book. It is just a book about struggle and hope and definitely something we need today. It's just perfect timing for a book like that. Uh, now, guys, if you haven't, the show Tear Talks for you, brave men and women that work in corrections. So please subscribe, interact, engage, comment, hit that bell. The bell is going to notify you every time I post a video. We're going to go to our sponsor when we come back. Let's talk about how we need to motivate, motivate each other, show support. All right, stand by. I wanted to attend a university that had an intelligence program. I wanted to look at problems different. I wanted to increase my critical thinking abilities. AMU offered those avenues to expand. Obtaining your degree as an adult, you're actually paying yourself and investing in yourself. You can't put a dollar on it, it's priceless. It's something that can never be taken away from you. American Military University. Learn from the leader. Guys, inmate manipulation is a course that is highly needed. It's the process that's so slow moving and subtle that you don't realize it's happening. When inmates choose to manipulate, they manipulate our need to react. Situational awareness and insight is going to save your career. It's going to save you from doing foolish things. Listen to your gut. So the more insight we have, the more we can recognize what isn't so overt, and we can correct our behavior before we fall into a trap that we can't get out of. If you allow an inmate, to pull you out of your prescribed role. 
you are opening up a door for a host of problems. Inmate Manipulation, the psychology behind inmate manipulation. Available now. Link in description. All right, and we are back. So before we go into the topic, Russ, this, was, this is personal for you. So what happened? Okay, so um, I'll, I'll, let me just back up. Not so much what happened tonight, but uh, it was actually several months ago, and I just had come across this video that I did about this particular topic where, you know, someone was um, in one of these forums. I spent a lot of time in my forums trying to, you know, help people and stuff. And someone was talking about, you know, having had a rough day or they, you know, or I think it was actually, they weren't quite catching on on, you know, how to talk to inmates and give directives and stuff. And so someone said, well, you know what you ought to do is you, just, you, should, you should just quit, you know, just quit. And you know what, if you're going to say that, uh, you know, that that's the answer, you're no help at all to anyone. The answer is not quitting. You know what, there are some people that do not belong in this profession. There is no doubt of that. But that's really not for you at your level to decide. And you know what, we have to help people. We have to bring them up. We have to make them ready. We have to be willing to give them the training they need, the knowledge they need, and all of these things in order that they can deal with what is essentially a really hostile environment, right? No one is born into just being able to do this job. And so uh, basically, uh, again tonight, I ran across another Jack and uh, basically um, this guy said, well, he just got out of the academy and he's been out on the floor and they've had nothing but endless fights for the past couple of weeks and he was getting kind of tired of it. And someone came, well, you know what? You should just quit. You don't belong in this profession. And so I called this guy on it. Steve will call him, right? He just said that he doesn't know this guy. And this guy was just talking about how he's kind of tired of it. And, you know, it's an adjustment, right? Doing this job is an adjustment any way you look at it. And this guy wasn't, you know, down in the mouth or saying that he couldn't have it. He's just saying he's kind of tired of that. And, you know, it's just, you know, something that you know it's going to take him getting some used to but this guy his big solution was well you should just quit because you're not cut out for this i'll guarantee just about that that guy you know he's not really helping anyone he hasn't gone out there and made sure that some people that are having a tough time are able to make it better that's why i did this video and we'll release it uh some other time whenever you decide on um on youtube um about you know making sure that you're taking care of your fellow correctional officer, making sure that you're stepping forward, making sure that your answer isn't, well, you should just quit. Yeah, you know what's funny? I mean, obviously there's going to be moments in the career where you get frustrated. I wish this was a career where every day uh, you're going to be happy and wanting to go into work. I don't think there's any job. Even if you're actually doing stuff you dream about, I mean, you're going to have days where it's just rough and, you know, you want to take that day off. You're, you know, you're mentally exhausted or whatnot. I mean, I can just imagine if I had a bad day on Tear Talk and call Steve. Steve, like, hey, just quit. Or my wife has a bad day with Mia. Hey, hey, just quit. You know, it, it, life's not easy. You know, jobs, benefits, you know. It, it's, you know, I, I wish, you know, that we all could choose our path in life. But sometimes we have to, you know, do what's best for us. And even if we're going through these frustrated moments, you know, you need people to motivate you to, you know, maybe it's just a moment that will pass. And, and for the most part, that's what it is. And we need to motivate people through the toughest of times. Because as I said, you have a lot of good people that work in this profession who are going to have those moments. But eventually the moments pass and they continue to be that pillar of strength that we lean on uh, every day. Because, again, we're all human and we're all going to have those bad days. But, but Connie, I'm sure you deal with it on the medical side too, right? Days where you just get frustrated, but the, I, I think the last thing we want to hear from somebody is, oh, just quit. We definitely get frustrated, but everybody's skill set develops over time. You know, you start working, you get into the mix of things, you start to understand how everything connects, how it all makes sense. When you first walk in, you don't know, and that's just a reality. It's not a traditional work environment, so you can't necessarily compare it to something else you might have experienced because you will have never experienced something like this before. And I think it does us all a disservice when we start to discourage people and we start to encourage them to actually quit. You know, 
when I first started, there was a lot of stuff I didn't know. And I'm thankful for people who were willing to show me the way. People who could see that I had other goodness to bring to the table and that there were other ways that that goodness could benefit the industry. The moment we start telling people to quit is the moment that we start losing really, pe really good people with skills that only need to be developed. We need to start taking times to actually do that. Yeah, it's very well said. Uh, for me, obviously, it's something that frustrates me because, uh, you know, I've been in the field for over 18 years and uh, there are moments where I completely love it and there are moments where I completely hate it. Uh, and when I'm going through those moments that I completely hate it, I need people to remind me of why I still do it. And that's the key. I, can't, I don't have an option to quit the profession. I'm seven years away from a pension you know, 65% at a very good salary, full medical, you know, that's something, by the way, if I pass, my wife gets. So quitting for me is selfish too, because I'm, you know, not only I, am I relying on that pension, but God forbid, again, so is my family. So at the end of the day, what I'm looking for is for people to motivate me and to kind of remind me of why I'm still doing it. What's my purpose and how that purpose still exist. And, and I, you know, what's also funny, me and Russ and, and Connie, we do tear talk. We do keepers of chaos. You know, Connie's got the civilian corrections Academy, a great book out there as well. These are books to motivate people. So the funny thing is, is we're on the other extreme of what this person, Steve is doing. It's the opposite of what we're trying to do. We want to invite people uh, into this profession, but we also want to maintain good staff, which is a lot of hard work when you have to remind them of their importance when they feel that the profession has forgotten about that importance. And then you get a disgruntled employee that comes in and just says, you know, yeah, just quit. That's cowardly. You know, we're corrections. There's nothing cowardly about us. No, when, when we deal with problems, we face it head on and we don't quit. You know, I'll, I'll tell you something. Imagine having that type of person in a code with you and you're losing the battle. Oh, just quit. Yeah, let's just quit. You know, there's no quitting in our blood. And I think that's why also, Russ, I think that's why it's personal to you as well. Correct, Russ? I mean, imagine if you had to walk with a guy like that on a code. Well, yeah, it, it's personal. But, you know, there's also, this, there's also this truth at the base of it all. We all come into corrections. We all have to make adjustments. We all have to develop. No one's born, you know, a correctional staff member, a correctional officer with a, with a jumpsuit and a code bag. Um, or, you know, a baton and spray on their hip, and they're just ready to go like that. You know, I was a mess my first year, um, you know, and part of that was because of the old sink and swim mentality that used to go on and apparently still does in some quarters in corrections. And then, uh, but then part of it was, though, I was well-developed because I had some really excellent uh, people teaching me. You know, I've uh, talked before about, you know, contraband and stuff. And I mean, there were some of these wizards with contraband that I, they would come into a room and suddenly they were pulling shanks out of walls and stuff. And I, I want to be like those guys. And I set, I set myself to becoming like them. I set myself to develop myself professionally. And you know what? I got myself to a point where I'm well recognized for what I've done in corrections. I'm not known for that first year that I spent kind of, you know, not sure whether or not I was ever going to amount to anything. Um, but you know what, if I'd had maybe a few worse teachers, a few more Steve's in my way, maybe I would have quit. And what does that say to some people that could have been coming up that could have been out there promoting this profession out there, saving lives out there, taking the dangerous contraband off of the tears day after day after day. Yeah, you know, I like to think that a lot of us that join corrections, uh, because it's such a job that has very uh, high risk, uh, just the dangers of the job, our motivation has to be beyond the external incentive of, of money or, um, you know, benefits, because there could be other places you could get that. There's got to be a why that has a strong foundation to what we do, you know, and that foundation is just in us. Like, for me, I love the fact that um, we can have an impact uh, especially me on the supervisory level, I can have a great impact on staff, maybe change uh, some of the things uh, that need to be changed, you know, to make it safer for staff and the population. 
um, but also just just the, the service that you provide to the public. You know, what, what they don't see, I, I, whether they recognize it or not, we, I know what the worth is and what I do. And that's something I always am able to fall back on when I have the negativity come my way, whether it's internal or whether someone pushes on me. Because even if I'm having a bad moment, I look at myself to bring myself out of it. That's just who I am. Don't get me wrong. I love support and support helps me, but I don't always rely on that support. Part of it also has to be on me wanting to find that positivity. Because even if I'm having a negative set of mind, uh, even if it's me that's, you know, feeling trapped, I'm going to try to do my best not to push that on somebody else. Because these are my thoughts. These are subjective. These are me. You know, it could be just a personal experience. I don't know. But eventually I'll find my way out again. I mean, I'm going through it right now. But eventually I'll find my way out again. But the last thing I want to do is kill it for somebody else. And the last thing I want to do is to even express that that's even a solution. That at the end of the day, you're having a bad day, just quit. You know, yeah, just quit. Yeah, like, like that's just even plausible. You know, one last thing before we get to Connie, uh, just real quick, is that I think right now we're in this profession where a lot of us are disenfranchised and I wish we could do something to change all that. Uh, there's nothing easy about being in this profession. I wish I could tell everybody that every day is going to be great. Um, but it, it's not. And I'm not here to sugarcoat that. The reason why I believe that this is a great profession is because you develop a family that will do anything for each other. Uh, something that I have never found anywhere else. And to me, that's a foundation that means the world to me. Trust and believe. I mean, enough for, to motivate me to do what we're doing now. Uh, and when I see people that actually say, well, just quit, it's not even just about quitting on yourself. It's about quitting on the other people around you that are going to rely on you and hope that you are a hundred percent into this profession. Because I'm going to tell you something right now. The last thing you want, especially from a guy like Steve is for someone that quit the professional, uh, the profession mentally, but still there physically. You know, you're not giving it 100%. And now you're a cancer to everyone else. Um, what's your thoughts on that, Connie? And I see Russ also in agreement. And maybe Russ could feed off as well. But I'll go to you first, Connie. And I would love to hear Russ's thoughts. So, I mean, for one thing, you know, I, I'm hearing, you know, I'm listening to the, I have some feelings about Steve, right? Um, but I think the other side of that is that Steve was probably treated the same way when he started. And sometimes some of what we do is reflective of our own experiences. And so it's unfortunate if that was Steve's experience and he just does not know how to be a supportive team member to his fellow officers. I mean, I've seen some Steve's in medical that, you know, we've had to pull aside because you know, when you got brand new nurses just coming from nursing school and they're, re they're ready, they want to get in, they want to do their work, but they, their skills aren't quite where they need to be. They just need a little extra oomph. You know, you, they, I've had some nurses that are like, all right, she's not going to make it. And you never know. Like, those are the ones that are, they're on their feet all day. They're running back and forth. They're trying to figure out really what's going on. So as much as like, you know, those Steves that are out there that can be cancerous to our system. You know, I also think about what happened to Steve that get, got Steve to that point, whether it's just burnout or it's just, you know, he's disenfranchised for whatever reason, you know, you know, maybe it's time for Steve to step away, right? If he doesn't have that positive goodness that he could bring to the table and that he could help to develop someone else. And I love that because it takes someone from medical to tell you you got to look past the symptoms. Is that <laughs> yeah? I I, I got gotcha. you. You know, but but you're you're 100 percent correct. I mean, it, it's true. I mean, obviously, you know, it could have started somewhere, and then you have the person just carrying that negative torch. You know, like like you know, like, I'm just going to go ahead and this is what I was taught, uh, and I'm going to go ahead. And maybe they don't even know any better. Maybe at this point we're aggressive against Steve. But then we have Connie who's going to, by the end of this episode, make us feel sorry for Steve. I, I don't know what I want to do now. Uh, don't Russ feel sorry changing. for Steve. <laughs> hey, hey. Russ ain't let, changing. Let, let, me say, let me say something <laughs> at this point, all right? 
you hit points in your career where maybe things are going rugged, maybe not everything's going good. And sometimes, you know, you start to wander off that path. I've had those moments in my career and I've had people pull me back from that. I've had people, you know, bring me aside, set me down and, you know, put me back in that groove to continue on so that uh, my line of the way that I've developed through my career, it's not an arc, you know, it's a gradient that keeps on going up where I'm always going to be better than I was the day before. Are there some setbacks and some little peaks and valleys that might go down here and there? Yeah, but overall, it's that gradient, you know, keeping on going up the peak. I know, I'm sure Connie's that way. You know, she's better than she was yesterday, and tomorrow she'll be better than she was today. You have to, you have to have that. But if you just settle in to the point where you can just, you know, pass judgment on someone, you should quit. You know, this job's not for everyone, they say. Yeah, but it's not, not for anyone either. You have to develop talent. Talent doesn't just happen by itself. You have to develop it. I love that word development. Connie brought it up earlier. So, Hey, Russ, a lot of the stuff you said right now just hit home. I think it's going to hit home for a lot of people that uh, are watching, especially I like the arc versus the gradient. Uh, I think that was very powerful. Uh, I like to actually, I'm going to, I may start uh, using that because I agree with that. You know, I, every day I try, I'm going to use that. I'm stealing that shit. That's mine now. Uh, you know, no, but it's true. I, I think that's part of what we do with this channel. And, and what people don't realize is now I'm going back to hating Steve again. So I'm, I'm, you know, <laughs> I'm sure once Connie speaks, I'll feel sorry for him again. But let me hate him for just a minute here. Because if you think about what Russ said, uh, and again, obviously everybody, this, this is a great dialogue here, is that, you know, even what we do on Tear Talk, what Connie does in the correction, what you do in Keepers in Chaos, you're putting everybody on that gradient. You know, you're, you're, you're trying to get them to be better than they were yesterday. And we're... We're doing our best to do that, not just with ourselves, but with others. And then it only takes one troll. You know, you, you know, it's funny, too, because Corrections has been so far behind uh, from any type of positive light. And as much as we try to spread that positive light from the inside out, you still get people from the inside that destroy it. You know, even if it's something as telling someone just quit this profession, that is an extremely dark light. You know, that's a light that we don't want because at the end of the day is here we are taking these small little steps forward. But man, when there's just that one speck of something negative, it pulls us so far back. And it's even worse when it comes from within. If we are, we can't expect the public to believe in what we do if, if we ourselves don't. And when you have someone that's going through this moment and then you have someone that's literally tell them, oh, just quit because, you know, whatever the thoughts of, of are about the profession, just imagine how that individual talks to other people from the outside that don't know about this profession. I mean, this is probably someone that probably has chances to say something good, you know, something positive, if not so much about the profession, maybe the people you work around, uh, just to kind of give some... Uh, positive attention towards the outside. Let them see what it is that we do. And you just find it easier just to embrace the negative and even tell the own people in your profession that, hey, it's better if you just quit. Um, hey, Connie, what do you think about Russ's gradient versus the arc? No, I think that's that's spot on. I mean, I can't imagine. I'm like, I don't know how many times I was in that space. Like at one minute, I'm like, I'm, I'm done with this. And another minute, you know, you, you do have those moments where you get that development. I think the other thing, too, is that you really just have to be open. You have to be coachable. You have to be able to take some time to reflect and to figure out why, you know, remind yourself why you're here. Remind yourself why you got into the business, what you're doing, and the impact that you could have. I mean, and quite frankly, I mean, I was thinking about what you said when you talked about, you know, you don't want the Steve when you're responding to a code, right? Like, because you think about what is that impact when you're at work, how that Steve can impact everybody else. You know, no one wants to be around the negative Nelly. So maybe Steve has been isolated, right? Because his attitude is probably not just reflective on, you know, the platform where Russ, where Russ was at. You know, his attitude is probably like that. And it's probably people who want nothing to do with Steve, right? So it's very interesting, you know, when we start to talk about the way, you know, some of these negative people can impact the industry, but it's also how they impact inside. 
and what and how they can be bringing the morale down and how they could be in de- like independently dimming somebody else's light. Yeah, and, and you know what's funny too? I think sometimes when you have someone that's going through those moments and, you know, let's say they're looking for that support, sometimes people will push the negative because they know it's a quicker way to kind of push the dialogue away. You know, it's a lot harder to find the positive and then try to change the mindset of the person in front of you who needs that support at that time. Because now that's going to be a little bit of effort on both ends, 50%, 50% until you can get both sides at 100. Um, But sometimes when we're not invested in the dialogue or here goes such and such who's having a bad day, you know, maybe it's just quick if I just agree with them. Yeah, you know what the job is shit and let them go. And it's like, yeah, well, you only you didn't do that to be, you did that for yourself because you didn't want to be bothered. And sometimes, believe it or not, guys, we have to, if, if I, I think that's part of what we have the venues for. If we get a hint that there's something negative, I mean, you'll see Russ, especially on Keepers of Chaos and Boggs and, and, and Jim Hall, you know, they're quick to put something positive. They do not let that negative thing bastardize the hard work of what developed into over 4,000 followers on that social media group. You know, even with the tear talk, the numbers we have, we have to be very quick that when someone comes in um, with something that's negative, that goes against what we're trying to do, we have to be quick to shift that mindset because that's not what we want for this venue. Basically, I, again, we're not sugarcoating it, but we want people to believe it enough and to spread the positive thoughts about this profession because that's what this channel has been built on. That is the center of this channel. That's the center of Keepers of Chaos. That's the center of Civilian Correction Academy because we wouldn't be devoting our lives to it if we didn't think that there was something positive about it. Now you get someone who just, just quit, and at the end of the day, that sets us back and goes against the message of what we've been doing to bring people in, by the way. I mean, I'll tell you something right now. I get messages all the time from rookies who are watching this channel and they're going through rough moments too, but they come back to this channel because there's hope here. If anything, that, that's, that's what we provide, you know, and we're willing to talk to people for hours if need be to spell out what that hope is, even if it's going after the Steves of, 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 of this profession who want to, say the negative because listen russ said it at the beginning at the beginning of the show a lot of rookies that come in that are going to have these bad days they're going to have these bad days but this is the time where you can cultivate their growth you can motivate them and 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 then connie with the light you you help them shine their own light again there has to be something in them in themselves that wants it and sometimes you can tell i've invested myself in a lot of employees across my time especially as i moved up where I knew that they were frustrated with the profession, but I also knew that they loved it, you know? And the last thing I want to do is feed into the hate when there's more love. They're just having a moment of hate. And we all have that. It's quick. It will pass. But you have to be there and remind them, okay, hey, I gave you the chance to vent, you know, but let's, let's talk about other things that are positive that you need to remind yourself of because as of now, you're leaning towards the negative. And the one thing you don't want to do is have an individual who's on the fence, who has the potential to be a superstar, but it's having that one moment, just it's one moment. You know, it, it, it could mean in the long run, nothing later. Just right now, it means everything. And for us to be the person that says, well, you should just quit. And at that moment, they're so vulnerable that they either think about it or they do it. And that, to me, is unacceptable because that, to me, messes with the, the potential of where this profession can be because remember this profession literally is strengthened by the people that are in it that's what makes it a noble profession and if we're pushing people out because you know they they may have a challenge that we just tell them to quit at then we're going to have you know who's the people that are going to be left are the ones that don't face the challenges that are weak you know because again they've never been challenged um i know russ you wanted to say something what would you have russ yeah i was just going to say you know sometimes Sometimes, and we, I mean, we see them all the time. We see these people that they, uh, you know, they do quit. They quit, but they never leave, you know. And then they're just, you know, they're that, they're that empty husk. They're filling up space. 
yeah, they got the they got the badge or they got the medical bag. This does, but you know what? But they're not functioning. You know, they're not they're not bringing anything to the game. So you know what? Um, I think that that's worse than actually quitting. But some of these people, maybe these, maybe this one guy that he's telling to quit, maybe that's the guy that um, does quit. But maybe if he hadn't, maybe he'd have gone on to save somebody's life. Maybe he would have gone on to, you know, uh, find a way to get people better equipment, maybe better pay. You know, maybe he would have ended up training hundreds of people and saving dozens or hundreds of lives through his training efforts. You never know. It's a small, you know, it starts out it's that small ripple effect but it reaches to all the edges of the pond. Right, and, and, and Russ, uh, obviously spot on. Remember, especially when it comes to the very beginning of the career, these people are still trying to shape their idea of what this profession's about, and we're bringing people in, communities like, again, Keepers of Chaos, Tear Talk Corrections, uh, Civilians Correction Academy, with a positive mindset, first time ever probably that this has ever been done. And now, you know, when the foundation gets a little sh shook, you know, it makes sense where they don't know where to go because they haven't developed their footing yet, you know? So we have to be very careful of how we deal with those people who go through those moments, especially early in their career, because they could be a star player, but they haven't really got an understanding of, of is this profession worth it? You know, is it worth the headaches? Is it worth, well, you, you may not know that, but we're trying to cultivate. And that's where it takes that, you know, one person, let's say Russ, you're kind of come and say, listen, you're having a bad day but we need you in this profession, you know, and, and, and you're, you know, it's, it, 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 sometimes it, it may be tough, but at the end of the day, there, there's a light. You just got to wait for it. You got to do what you can to hold on to that. Those people that have that potential instead of pushing them out by telling them to quit because you're right, Russ and, and Connie, I, I, right too, is that when they're at that beginning of their career and they're still trying to get an understanding of this profession, I, I don't think they, they're, if, if they get pushed to quit and they do, it's not because they're cowards and they can't do the profession. You know, it's just because, you know, there's no one there sharing anything positive and then they can't, you know, remember, why am I even doing this shit? And that's where we come in. Hey, guys, it's just one day. Let's, let's, let's get through this. Let's get through this. And, and here we are. I've been in this profession for 18 years. I've had a lot of frustration. I would say even a frustrating year or two, you know, but I'm still here. And in the end, in seven years, hopefully, God willing, I retire. And my family will have some good money. You know, God forbid something happens to me. And uh, I really feel that my life has value. Uh, not just with the family, obviously. That's obviously number one. But with the work I do, I always hold up my head high and tell people I'm proud of who I am. And the funny thing is, when you work corrections and you don't quit, that's where you get to stand tall. That's where you get to say that you've accomplished something. And that's just in my mind. Uh, Connie, would you like to say anything in closing? Yes, I would. I wanted to say that there are more rock stars in our profession than there are Steve's. And I just want to thank those rock stars who are willing to lend a helping hand, who are willing to take a moment to show someone the ropes, who are willing to interpret a policy or procedure. I thank those nurses and those doctors and those medical folks who, when the new person comes in, that they embrace that new person, that they show them ways to run their clinic and still be safe. They show them ways to engage with the inmate population without crossing boundaries. You know, those are things that we don't necessarily learn prior to coming into the role. So I just wanna say thank you to all of those who are willing to take the time to actually show others the ropes so that they are effective and that they are safe in our environment. Yeah, now just imagine, uh, again, we got Connie with a book coming out. And I'm sure the book at some point, you get that writer's block, you become frustrating. What kind of friend would I, or frustrated, what kind of friend would I would be when Connie's calling me at two in the morning because she's got writer's block, you know? And, you know, and I'm like, you know what, Connie, because it's two in the morning, I'm, you know, I'm tired. Uh, you know what, Connie, I'm just going to look to end the conversation. Hey, Connie, you should quit. Just quit. fuck the book. Who cares? <laughs> but then, by the way, call me back the next day at, at, at one o'clock in the afternoon. Hey, Connie, hey, listen, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was tired. Stay motivated. But you know what I'm saying? I, when you think about it, the, 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 the advice to quit isn't for the benefit of the person who has the problem. It's really the benefit for the person who's looking to end the dialogue because they don't want to be bothered. And that, that's my opinion. If Connie, in all honesty, if Connie called me up two in the morning, which she does, she doesn't have writer's block. 
But if she did, uh, I would be up with her until whatever it needs to be to get her past that writer's block because that's what we do. And I would just call out work sick the next day. I mean, it is what it is. I mean, I can't. <laughs> My friend comes first. Uh, hey, Russ, any thoughts in closing? Um, you know, I just, I just want to reach out to everyone whether they're a new person or whether there's someone that's looking to impact and, you know, help some of these new people, or even if you're one of those Steve's, <clears throat> Steve's out there, let's get it all back on the right track. And, uh, you know, I hope that this video helps some of you. Uh, the other video that we're going to post up on uh, YouTube, I think a lot of people can take that to heart. Um, you know, I took that video. I spoke from my heart about this subject. And um, I think that, you know, there's a lot of people that, you know, asked if they could use it in, in training and other things to try and impact and make some of these people realize that, you know, that idea that you can just quit because this isn't for everybody. Yeah, but that doesn't mean that we're just going to flush talent. Right. So anyway, I hope everyone will take it to heart, take it to heed and, and check it out and, you know, really try and do your best to become an advocate, an ambassador for this profession. That's what, um, that's the main thing that I think that we're spreading with Keepers of Chaos and Tear Talk and the uh, Civilian Correction Academy. I think we're really trying to push that forward in a way where people, you know, are going to be hopefully, you know, less negative in this because it, it can be a negative profession. There ain't no doubt about it, but I loved my 27 years in it. Yeah, you know, I'm going to tell you something. Uh, Russ, obviously, uh, I think this was a great, a great topic. Uh, I'll definitely post that video up over the weekend. And Russ has another video that's going to come up about critical thinking. It's going to kind of align with what me and Connie, we had a dialogue a couple of days ago about kind of playing chess versus checkers. We've covered it a few times, but it was more about don't let emotions uh, get in the way of what you need to do. And um, again, guys, just in short, um, if you guys get a chance, don't forget, yeah, Connie's book is uh, going to be coming out in the market. Uh, I will. Uh, she gave you the website. Uh, uh, Connie, am I saying the website again for the pre-purchase? Sure. The cage was her cocoon.com. Yes. And uh, don't forget, check out Keepers of Chaos on Facebook. It's a very good group. If you're on Facebook, check it out. Uh, maybe what we'll start doing is um, we can start doing some live videos uh, just for Keepers of Chaos at that point. So if you guys want to check out the live videos where we had that interaction, that Q&A, what we'll do is we'll just post it through Keepers of Chaos. Uh, and just have, that was a great dialogue we had the other day. Just the interaction was great. Uh, but in final closing on this, guys, we need to support each other. We need to motivate each other. At the end of the day, it's a lot easier to, re it is, to just end the dialogue and tell somebody to quit. But you have no idea what that person's impact would be on this profession. You just don't. And we're all going to have those moments where we feel that we want to quit. That doesn't mean you're weak. It just means that you have to rediscover your strength. That's all. And that takes time. And that's where you have people like Russ, Connie, myself, a whole group of people on Keepers of Chaos and just in our community here who are willing to sit down with you and rediscover that strength. And we'll keep on doing it until you have the impact that's meant to change this profession. And and I think this was a great dialogue. Thanks for bringing it up, Russ. As always, guys, the show is Tear Talk. If you haven't, please subscribe, interact, engage, comment, hit that bell. That bell's going to notify you every time I post up a video. Stay safe. Whoa.